Hi there and welcome to an overview of the learning design process, ADDIE. Um, this is a presentation that's being given by Michael Barber, although the materials are, that are being used were developed by Dr. Robert Branch at the University of Georgia. Before we begin, what I'd like you to do to start off with is to take out a piece of paper and a pencil and just quickly sketch a process that describes how you would develop learning episodes. So if you had to design a lesson um, that you were going to teach in a classroom or in a training session, just sketch out the process that you would go through in order to design that lesson. Um, what you might want to do is pause the recording here uh, to take a minute to do that and then when you're done just start up the recording again. The objective for this particular presentation is to look at the various aspects or the various attributes of instructional design. In order to do this, one of the things that you need to do is you need to understand the, the main entities or the main components of a student-focused learning space. The ADDIE process, Analyze, Design, Develop, Implement, and Evaluate, <clears throat> looks at a way or is a way of describing or talking about a way in which you can create episodes of intentional learning. So this isn't an instance of informal learning, which you would find, say, if you went to um, the Detroit Institute of the Arts, for example, or the Detroit Science Center, where there are lots of things that are put there designed to provide learning, but that's more of an informal learning. What you're looking at here is a way of creating intentional learning. We're going to look at each of these steps individually, and the course is designed around this paradigm. And I use the term paradigm very specifically because ADDI isn't a model. It is a way in which you can look at instructional design, not necessarily a way in which you should do instructional design. An instructional design model would provide you a specific way or specific process for doing it. Um, the ADDIE paradigm provides a way of looking at it, a way of talking about it, a way of classifying it, a way of structuring that process. Looking at the first one in particular, Analyze, the purpose of the analysis portion of ADDIE, or the analysis component of instructional design, is to figure out what is causing the discrepancy in the performance in which you are looking to correct. Specifically, what you have is you have an actual performance, which is what your learners or your workers are currently doing, and then you have a desired performance, which is what you want them to do. And the gap that exists between those two realms is what we know as the performance disc discrepancy. This performance discrepancy is going to be caused by one of three things. Limited resources, lack of motivation, or lack of knowledge or skill. When it comes to instructional design, and particularly training, we are only as trainers able to handle one of these three causes, and that would be lack of knowledge or skill. If it is a lack of resources, we don't need training for that. We just need more money or a better use of money to provide the resources that's necessary. And as an instructional designer, we can help suggest what those resources may be, but we don't need training for that. And the same with a lack of motivation. If learners or workers simply don't want to do it or there's no rationale or reason for them to personally um, be invested in doing it, there's nothing that training can do in order to uh, correct that. The only thing that training can do is it can reduce the amount of the gap that is attributable to lack of knowledge or skill. The main procedures in the analyze process are the six that you see listed there. And an instructional designer who goes through these six steps 
at the end would produce what's known as an analysis summary. Oops, I went in the wrong direction there. I apologize about that. Um, the next step in the, or the next stage in the ADDIE paradigm is design. Now, the purpose of the design stage is to figure out or to verify what the desired performances are and then to determine the learning tasks and testing strategies that are needed for the training to overcome the performance discrepancy. Now the main procedures in the performance discrepancy are the four that are listed here. And as an instructional designer goes through those four steps, they would end up creating a design brief which could then be delivered to the client. The third step in the instructional design process or in the ADDIE paradigm is the development step. Uh, the purpose of development is to actually create or generate the learning resources and then to validate those learning resources to make, so to make sure that they are effective resources. The various steps in the development process are the six that you see listed there. And I'll point to the final two as important ones and ones that often get overlooked. In addition to generating the actual materials that are going to be used and the strategies that are going to be used to deliver the training and to support the training, you need to make sure that you actually conduct some sort of formative evaluation or pilot testing of those materials and of those strategies to ensure that they're effective. Because as an instructional designer, if you complete the instructional design process in an ineffective or inefficient way, the chances of you closing the performance gap that exists are small. So you want to make sure that the materials that you have are effective. After going through the development step, um, the deliverable that you would be able to give to the client would be a set of learning resources. The fourth step in the instructional design process is, is the implementation step. The purpose of the implementation step is to actually prepare the environment and to conduct the learning guide. And by conduct the learning guide, I mean actually implement the guide that was created for the students and the instructor. There are two main steps in the implementation phase, and that's essentially to actually do the learning. Um, or do the training. So in order to do that you would obviously first need to select to prepare and then to schedule a time um, for those learners to take that training and then again select prepare and schedule specific facilitators that were able to uh, deliver that training. The deliverable that an instructional designer would give to their client at the end of this stage would be an implementation strategy and if the client were so inclined to continue to um, to continue to use your services the final stage although it's not it st stated here on this slide would be to actually implement that strategy so actually to do the training itself the final stage of the ADDIE paradigm is the evaluation stage and the purpose of the evaluation stage is to assess the quality of the materials that you have designed, of the training that you have delivered, and then to test the effectiveness of those things with the actual learners. Um, one of the things you should start to note here is that this is not a lockstep process. Um, when you were looking back at the develop stage, there were evaluation aspects included in there. Uh, there was a formative revision step there, there was a pilot study step. Those are forms of evaluation and those were forms of evaluation looking specifically at the quality of the instructional products and the quality of the processes that were being proposed. Um, after the implementation stage, you'd also want to look at the quality of the processes that were actually used you would look at whether or not the training was effective in actually closing the gap that was identified in the analysis stage. The main products or procedures that you would do during the evaluation stage um, is to look at quality assurance. Um, so first you're going to have to determine some sort of criteria as to how you're going to measure quality. 
based on that criteria you're going to need to select some specific tools that you're going to use to evaluate um, the items that need to be evaluated and then you're actually going to conduct those evaluations the deliverable that you would provide um, the client at the end of this stage would be an evaluation plan and if the client were to sign off on that plan then you would go and actually conduct the evaluations or complete that final step there let's take a moment um, and step back and what I would like you to do is using the materials that were in the Gustafson and Branch chapter. So this is not quite exactly as the slide um, because we've decided this year not to use the book. Um, take a look at the chapter and take a look at the Gagne et al. book. Both of those will include a couple of instructional design models in there. So not an Addy paradigm but an instructional design model which um, in most cases, you'll probably be accompanied by a figure. Go and find one of those models and then use the Addy paradigm as a way of critiquing the model that you find there. Again, this would be a good time to pause the recording to go and actually look up one of those models and take five or six minutes just to look at it and see if you can identify all of the various steps within the five parts of the Addy paradigm in that particular model. As a way of trying to synthesize this information and, and to make it your own, the last thing that I would like you to do in terms of tasks, I would like you to pause the recording in a second and actually sit down and with a, p a piece of paper and a pencil and to go through and to try to take the components of Addy, so those five steps, analysis, design, develop, implement, and evaluate, and rename them to something that is personally meaningful to you. Once you've gone through and renamed each of these components, what I'd like you to do is to try to draw a graphic that would illustrate your particular instructional design model that uses the steps of the Addy paradigm. So if you were to provide a visual for the instructional design model that you have created based upon your renamed components, what would it look like? Again, take a minute to pause the recording here and to go through this activity. As we begin to close up this particular episode, one of the things that I want you to take away from this is that the Eddy paradigm is a systems-based approach that can really assist in dealing with the complexities of student-focused episodes of learning. And I say student-focused, and I don't use that in contrast to teacher-focused. I'm not referring here to the difference between, say, a lecture, which most people would consider a teacher-centered approach, um, and, say, group work or some other form of constructivist learning that people would label as a student-focused approach. Um, student-focused learning is anything where you are trying to move the student in terms of what they actually do to where you would like them to be. So trying to close that gap between the actual performance and the desired performance. Um, so a lecture can be student focused if it is designed to move the students along that continuum. Group work can just be just as student focused. Um, so a systems based approach where you're actually going through a specific set of processes in order to deal with all of the things that you would have in a learning environment. Um, you know, you've got all of the demographics and, and learning backgrounds and individual characteristics of all of the learners. You've got the physical space that you've got to deal with and any issues that may or may not arise with that from furniture to the temperature of the room to the size of the room to the lighting to the technology that may be available to the um, individual ability of the instructor to the limits of the curriculum to uh, constraints of time these are all complexities in that particular relationship and 
the ADDIE paradigm and instructional development in general is a systems-based way to deal with all of these complexities in order to design learning that will move students along the continuum that makes up their performance discrepancy. The other thing that you should note is that while ADDIE is a paradigm and there are literally hundreds of instructional design models that are out there when you start to deconstruct these models you will notice that the fundamental components of all of these models tend to be the same and you can tie each of them to the five steps that are presented in the ADDI paradigm. So again that's basically it for this particular episode. Um, once you finish this just continue to move your way through the remaining episodes in this first unit.